Welcome to my house. Welcome to the Structure Talk podcast, a production of Structure Tech Home Inspections. My name is Ruben Saltzman. I'm your host, alongside building science geek, Tessa Murray. We help home inspectors up their game through education, and we help homeowners to be better stewards of their houses. We've been keeping it real on this podcast since 2019, and we are also the number one home inspection podcast in the world, according to my mom. Welcome back to the Structure Talk podcast. Tessa, as always, great to see you. We are Good coming off a, a long show talking about all different kinds of failures I've done and, and some fun projects. We talked about that and last wins. week. Yeah, yeah. And some wins. Educational moments. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's new <laughs> in your world, Tess? Hey, you know, I, um, I'm actually going to be taking a trip to Ohio, um, next week, um, for the solar eclipse going through Indiana. And yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm excited about that. Okay. All right. And how are you getting there? Are you flying or are you driving? Driving. Okay. And did you find somewhere to stay? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> that was the challenging part. But yes, all the Airbnbs are completely booked up in that swatch, you know, that goes from, kind of from the southwest to the northeast all the way up through uh, like Cleveland and stuff. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was not easy. But luckily, got on top of that early enough that um, we do have a hotel. So it should be a, it should be an interesting trip. We'll see. Hopefully we have good weather across our fingers. Hopefully so. And by the time this episode airs, I think it will have already happened. Yes. So, but it we'll, will. we'll talk about it on the next uh next time you're yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That sounds like fun. Yeah. How about you, Ruben? Anything uh new going on in your world? What's new? No, nothing nothing too new, nothing too exciting. I need to put in a reverse osmosis system in my kitchen. Oh. I was listening to really joe rogan podcast somebody is like you got to listen to this one and he had this guy dave Mm -hmm. brecca on and he was talking about all this stuff with health and and stuff that's going to kill you and one of the things they talked about is that there is an inverse relationship between the level of fluoride in city water and people's iq for the city oh (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh. And I was like, okay. you know what? I've been kicking around the idea of an RO system for a long time. Yeah. And now just this is pushing me over the edge. I need to get fluoride you know, out of my water. I gotta tell you something, though. This is interesting, and we're taking a complete tangent, but I have I have had um reverse osmosis water for the last two years now where okay. I live. And it is the best water I've ever had. And I Mm. love it. I love it so much. And I'm spoiled by it. Now, anywhere else I go, the water just doesn't taste good to me. That being said, I also got the first pre-cavity I've ever had in my life last year. Oh. So I have no idea if that is just because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of other variables, but I would say I'm a pretty good, you know, toothbrusher. I brush my teeth. I always brush my teeth twice a day, you know, morning, evening. Um, I never used to floss until recently, but now I'm flossing. I, you know, I go for regular cleanings and I have never had a cavity in my life until last fall. I went in and they're like, yep, you've got the beginning of the cavity. And I was like, What? The only, I mean, the, so they recommended using a fluoride rinse, like a fluoride mouthwash. Yeah. So I've started doing that now because I don't want cavities. But does that have anything to do with maybe the removal of fluoride from my diet when I switched over to this RO system? I have no idea. I'm going to say absolutely because everything I've read about it, fluoride really does. I mean, it, it's like a miracle at preventing cavities i mean it is extremely good for your teeth it's it's bad for everything else but everything else (laughs) it it is very effective at preventing cavities so that's that's very interesting tess yeah Yeah. i have no i'm not a scientist and i'm not telling anyone that they should or should not use fluoride um but uh it's just my own personal experience oh and then well and then of course the question is does a fluoride rinse cause any problems i mean even if you rinse and you spit it out 
you're still your body's still absorbing it though i would think you know that's what i'm wondering Somewhat. is that safe i i have no clue okay yeah i mean neither. no clue all right <laughs> this is outside our area of expertise that's for sure all right total tangent we'll, we'll come back to this in five years and i'll let you know if i have any cavities i have not had a cavity for a very long time if something changes it was the fluoride there we go. All right. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh so what's the topic for today, Ruben? All right, Tess, today we're talking about gas leaks, natural gas leaks. Okay, we got a lot okay, to well, talk guys, about. I can tell you're you're fired up about this. Oh, um Tessa. has there been something that's happened recently that's brought this to the forefront of your attention? Well, if I recently, you mean like continuously for the as long as I've been inspecting. Uh, excuse me, for as long as I've been inspecting, yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm whipped up mean? about gas leaks. Here's, the, here's what happens. We do a home inspection. We find a gas leak and we tell someone there's a gas leak. There's two ways this ends up going and, and it's, it ends up being so black and white. Either number one, Somebody calls the gas company, the gas company comes out and they say there's no leak. Mm -hmm. And then we look stupid because they're the gas company and they're the experts and they know more than we do. And they, they are more than we're less than, uh, we're just the petty little home inspector. So we look stupid and then people don't trust us. They don't trust our report. You know, it's embarrassing. It sucks. So that's that's one outcome of us finding a gas leak. The other outcome is we don't notify the seller about it. We, you know, we just tell the buyer, "Hey, you got a minor gas leak here. You should fix it. It's probably something that's been leaking for like five years. It's tiny." Okay. And then it gets back to the seller that there was a gas leak, and then the seller is irate that we didn't tell them. They had a gas leak. It's, yeah, right. it's, it's one of the two. And we've gotten flack on both sides for so many years, Tessa. And it, you it just is so can't frustrating. Win. Yeah. So yeah. and we're we're still dealing with it. So we'll we'll come back to that. But first, I want to talk about what we do to find gas leaks and document them. So yes. you went you went through all of this. You taught home inspectors how to do this. What what do we do at Structure Tech? Well, now you're quizzing me, Ruben, because it's been a few years. <laughs> but I'll do my best. So um, so Structure Tech uses a tool called a what is it? The technical term. Um, it's a gas sniffer. That's what we call it. Yeah, but... I, I call them gas sniffers. You could call it a combustible gas detector. In fact, there's a couple of them out there. Let me wax on this. Okay. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're we're going yeah. down a, another path. All right. Reset. Few different electronic devices, and we don't all use them. There are home inspectors on our team who don't even want to use them. They don't trust yeah. them, and that's fine. Your nose is very good at finding gas leaks, and you know our, if our you have a good sense of smell. If yeah, if yeah, you, you're right. If you don't have if a bad you don't cold, trust your, right? And if you don't trust your nose, then you can use one of these devices. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But you know, I, I've got a good nose. If there's a gas leak, I'm going to smell it. I, I don't take yeah. an electronic gas detector and go over every fitting and every pipe at every house. I, I'm, I'm not hunting for these tiny minuscule things, but there's an, if there's a gas leak enough for me to smell it and you can, I, I'll tell you mm -hmm. what, Tess, you can smell mm -hmm. gas leaks, even tiny ones. And I've, of, of course, yeah. going back to last week's uh, podcast, of course I have tested this many times making gas leaks in my own house, making the smallest gas leak I can possibly create just to see how far away do I need to get before I smell it. And even making wow. the smallest thing I can possibly do, I can smell it when I'm a few feet away. I mean, the, the, the stuff that they, the gas company adds, it's called Mercaptan. It's extremely stinky. It's there to let you know there's a leak. So you can smell. Can I just say I'm really glad that none of those experiments made it into our last podcast episode where we talked about failures. <laughs> <laughs> You're still yes. here today. Yeah. That's good. 
<laughs> that could have been a nasty failure. Playing around with gas leaks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't published most of that testing because I don't know, people just get whipped it's up. It's not safe to replicate. Yeah. Probably let's just not. Say. So, <laughs> We, we've got a couple different devices. The one that all of our inspectors used when you were on the team test was a combustible gas detector. And it's a, a mm. fairly expensive device. They cost a couple hundred bucks and it'll detect gas leaks. It'll also detect exhaust gas. It'll That's it'll true. detect a wide range of products. But, you know, there's there's a newer product out there. Well, I shouldn't say newer. There's a different product that I, I think might be a little bit more handy for home inspectors to use, which is just okay. a gas leak detector. And okay. you, you can buy them about the same size as an electrical sniffer or a voltage mm -hmm. detector. There, it's, it's basically the same shape, same size, takes a couple of AAA batteries, and you can run this around all the fittings. And it, it works just about as well as the combustible really? gas detector. I mean, okay. it might... It might have just a split second delay compared to the other more expensive device, but for all intents and purposes, it's just as good at, at finding gas leaks. So a couple questions. One, is it a lot cheaper than the gas detector? Okay. And do you yeah. have to wait? Do you have to let it, when you turn it on, let it warm up and calibrate it and do all of that like you did with the older tools? Great question. Okay. Number one. They they cost about a tenth of a combustible gas detector. They, really? Yeah. How much I are mean, they? Uh, like twenty bucks. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're 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 very inexpensive. Yes. And as far as the warm up, the the one that I'm thinking of, and I I can't speak for all of them. There's just one that uh, Eric had told me about, so I tested it out. And yeah. with this one, you you turn the power button on, and it's got a thirty second countdown where it auto calibrates itself and then okay. it's good to go. So you don't need to mess around with calibrating it. Like, like the ones that we were used to. And, and just yeah. since someone's going to ask, I'll tell you which one it was that I tested. There, there's tons of them out there, but this one was called the top test. It's T O P T E S mm -hmm. as in Tessa top test mm -hmm. PT two zero five. Okay. And, They've got different models. There's probably a 210 with different features and whatnot. I happened to check out the PT205, and I was delighted with it. So huh. great little uh, great little gas sniffer, or gas leak detector, yeah. I should call it. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. I like the fact it's compact. It's small. It's affordable. A um, couple batteries and easy to use. It's a win. Yeah. And, oh, win. and the the batteries test. I mean, that was, that yeah. was always a complaint that we had with the yeah. combustible gas detectors is that yep. the batteries wouldn't be charged. They were nickel cadmium batteries. And yeah. once they went bad, you had to replace them. And the batteries were like, it was like 80 bucks for a pair or something like that. And they were yeah. proprietary. I mean, you could not go to batteries plus or triple a batteries or whatever and get new ones. You had to order them online. It was just, it was always yeah. frustrating. Yeah, so, and the way that the door would fit was always kind of finicky. And if it didn't fit perfectly, they wouldn't charge. So, yep, yeah. Yep. I'm glad to know that there's something, you know, a newer product out there that you trust. And it, it seems to work just as well. And it's easier and more affordable. Yeah. yeah so I like those devices. But like I said, we, we don't necessarily even need to use those electronic devices. It's kind of nice if your client is there, you look a little bit more professional using this. And if it's... <laughs> If it's something up above your head where you can't put your nose right on the fitting, you can reach yeah. your arm up. But for all intents and purposes, if you can get your nose there, it's just as reliable. You can put your nose right up to a fitting. You yeah. know it's leaking there. So yeah. The, yeah. the goal is if you find gas, figure out – or if you smell gas, try to figure out where it's coming from. And yeah. once you got that done, the, yeah. the way that we would prove there's a gas leak – all right, Tess, what would we do? Well, we have this other very expensive uh, tool we use, um, <laughs> liquid soap. Yes. Thank you. It's basically liquid soap. And you just kind of smear some on around the, the fitting or wherever you think that gas leak is coming from and watch for bubbles. And if you start seeing bubbles coming out, then you know, you verify that it is a gas leak. Yes. Then you want to mark it somehow. Yeah. And, yep. and our rule is 
you don't ever report anything that you smell and you don't ever report anything that you find with your electronic gas leak detector. Those are nice, nice tools for narrowing down where to check. But the only leak you ever report is a leak where you get bubbles. You can see the bubbles. You can take a picture of it or a video of it. You have absolute definitive proof that you have a gas leak here. That's no bubble yeah. equals no leak. And for, for you know, you're, you're talking about liquid soap. There's, there's basically three different versions of it that I know of. One is you just take a little jar of water, you add some dish soap to it, shake it up. Apply some of that. That's one way to do it. Another mm -hmm. would be to buy a gas leak detection solution. It costs mm -hmm. about five bucks for a little jar. Uh, it'll last a home inspector probably a couple of years. You know, you're not... The entire time I was inspecting, I had the same solution. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like it's a lot of money. Or no. uh, Joe on our team, he, he tells me his preferred liquid of choice is bubble solution that that kids use like for blowing oh, really? bubbles yeah. yeah yeah i can see that cool yeah he said uh -huh. that works really well too so it, it, it this is not an expensive product and it gives you definitive proof that you got a gas leak yeah so. very interesting um and just to go back to what you said you know i'd say most of the time you know in, during inspections like what is it maybe one out of every hundred houses you go into, maybe you, you smell gas, or you find a gas leak. I mean, well, I should clarify that it's been very rarely that I've found gas leaks that are significant enough to hit you when you walk in. That's yeah. pretty rare. Yeah. Um, and then you want to, you know, either get out if it's bad enough or try and figure out where it's coming from to notify oh. the sellers. Yeah. Um, I think, I had one of those in my entire inspection career you? where I walked in and I was like, yeah. I got to call somebody. This is an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. I had one of, I had one of those too, but most of the time, like you said, it's like once you're, you know, you're down in the mechanical room and you're testing the furnace and you're spending a lot of time and you know, your face is right next to these gas lines, then you kind of get a little whiff of something. Usually yeah. that's what's going on. You get a yep. little whiff and then you just start <laughs> sniffing all the, all the gas lines you can get to. And usually you'll kind of find a little something, but it's, it, I mean, it's because you're literally your, your face is down there and you you're, you're tuned into it. Whereas, you know, most homeowners that leak's been going on for, for years and they've yes. never noticed it. They've never smelled it before. Yes. And that's not the type of gas leak that, you know, that warrants, um, a lot of fear in my opinion, you know, you, it's not going a, to blow up. A house you know, 100 until you, right. Yes. Yeah. Just a tiny little leak that's been going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unnoticed. And I mean, I, okay, shouldn't, shouldn't say this, but I, I've, do, I've done testing, like yeah. how much gas do you need to actually create a flame? And oh. I've, I, I've, you know, I've held the lighter up there and I've made a leak just to see mm -hmm. how much will actually create a flame. And you got to have a really significant leak. I mean, something where you're going to smell it from across the room to create a flame. And I'm talking. You mean you held a lighter up to like a little tiny gas leak to see if the gas would would light up. That's exactly right. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's that's scary. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't try this at home. Of course. No. <laughs> but but it, you know it's it's a flame the size of what what you'd have on a cigarette lighter. You know it's it's okay. it's very tiny. But yeah. It's, it, even that is going to be what I would consider a significant gas leak. Huh. And and most of the gas leaks that we would find as a home inspector, there's no way it would actually create a flame if you held a lighter to it. I mean, it's it's yeah. think of it like a dripping faucet. Nobody's going to drown. You're not going to flood the house, but it's still dripping. It should still be addressed. And that's that's the seriousness of these gas leaks. And my gosh, yeah. Tess, good luck trying to convince people that there is any type of gray area. It's it's black or white in everybody's mind. The gas yeah. companies have these billboards. If you smell gas, what do you do? Yeah, you call them. You, get out, is what all yeah. the billboards say. Yeah, so yeah. You get need, out. 
call yeah, them. The house they must be gas. evacuated. Yeah, yeah. They'll shut off the gas to your house. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yep. So good luck trying to convince people, but there, there really is a difference. And so often we we would report these gas leaks and, oh, and, okay, let's go back to our procedure. So yeah. we take a picture of the bubbles. We put that in our report. Yep. We take yellow electrical tape. We wrap it around the location of the leak. We write leak. And then you put an arrow on there to point at it to make it really easy for the next person to find you have a picture of that in your report and you tell people exactly where the gas leak is. Despite all that, so often the gas company will come out and they'll say there's no leak. Tessa, I have personally, okay, a couple of stories. Number one, yeah, Melinda, or no, I won't say who it is. We'll just say one of the inspectors in our team. <laughs> we're not editing that out either. We're not editing that out. Uh, he, he was buying a house. This was, Way back in the day, I, I don't remember how long ago it was. It was probably 2009, 2010, something like that. And we found a gas leak at the house he was buying. They ended up bringing it up to the seller, told him there's a gas leak. They had the gas company come out. Gas company says there's no leak. Well, there, there was big bubbles. There was clearly a leak. So wow. we ended up going back to the house after he bought it. We checked it again, put the soap bubbles on there. And I mean, just or put the leak detection solution on there. There's big bubbles. We took a lighter, yeah. uh, took a video of it. Like, you know, it it's clearly a leak. But we told the gas company exactly where to look. And they said there's no leak. So I, I, I'm not saying that the people coming out there are incompetent. But uh, they're, they're using a different scale to find these gas leaks or they're using different tools and Tessa, they have different grades for gas leaks. And, and mm. what, what brings this up is that I've had a couple of home inspectors on my team complain recently about the gas company saying, uh, throwing structure tech under the bus, calling out our company by name and oh. saying structure tech is notorious for making a big deal out of nothing and making up gas leaks. Oh, and, man. Or when we've basically held their nose right to the leak and showed them where it is, they say, well, that's the size of a mouse fart and it's not going to make any difference. Yeah. And, okay. And then when we shared this amongst our team, like a bunch of inspectors on our team said, yep, I've had techs say the same thing, the size of a mouse fart. Like that, they're going around. The gas company is telling, using this language, and like all the texts at the gas company are calling it the size of a mouse fart and saying it's inconsequential. So, of course, now, now I'm Terrible. with up. Because yeah. what is it? it, it either yeah. it's you smell gas, get out, or it's the size of a mouse fart, and it doesn't matter. But you can't have the same company saying both things. Yeah. Which one is it? That is tough. I, I need to go get a drink of water. I'm whipped up. <laughs> Take a breath. What are these different categories of these gas leaks that, that, that the gas company has? Are there two or three or four? There's, there's three of them. Three, and okay. I, I used to have a link to a page that was like well hidden on the gas company's website categorizing yeah. these three levels of leaks and they've since taken the page down and if i knew then what i know now i would have taken a screenshot and i would have <laughs> saved it for myself but yeah what what okay level one mouse fart level <laughs> yeah. two nobody understands and level three is get out <laughs> level three is get out yes but the general public is not intelligent enough to understand the difference and if you can smell anything you just need to assume it's always level three and you need to get out of the house and then let the gas yeah. company come out there and tell you that it doesn't exist and structure tech <laughs> is crazy <laughs> so okay so a question for you then would you is there another option besides calling the gas company 
would you, that you'd put, you know, in your report or or tell the sellers if you've got an inspector who finds a gas leak, does that inspector then tell the buyer and tell the seller? And then what do they tell the seller to do about that gas leak? I'll tell you what, Tess, like we talked about earlier, you and I have both been in like one house where there was a major gas leak. In that case, I said, call the gas company, have it addressed. In all of the other places where I found gas leaks, probably hundreds of houses, my advice has been get a plumber out to repair the gas leak. I have never told people to call the gas company. The only time I tell people that is if I think it's an emergency. And it's Mm -hmm. very rare that you're going to find an emergency. It's almost always the size of a mouse fart. <laughs> so, and I, I've never had a problem with a plumber coming out and not finding our clearly marked gas leak. When yeah. we take that electrical tape, we got the pictures, whatever, the plumbers find it and they fix yeah. it. It's yeah. done. They don't come back and say, oh, this is no big deal. So right. that's our right. advice. You got, you got a small gas leak that the home inspector found. Just hire a plumber because here's the other part of a test. The gas company is not in the business of repairing gas leaks. They're in the business of making the house safe. If they actually do find a significant leak, and here's here's why why they have different standards. If they find a significant leak, their job is to make it safe. And how do they make it safe? They turn the gas off. Yeah. And yeah. they don't want to have to turn the gas off to a house when it's the size of a mouse fart. Okay, now you got no heat. You, your house is uninhabitable. They don't want to yeah. do that. They're they're in a right. tough position too. So yeah. it's, it's unfortunate that the only solution anybody seems to have is call the gas company. I don't think they're the best person for addressing small gas leaks, which is 99% of what we find during home inspections. You know, it's. It, I'm sorry that Structure Tech has been caught in the crossfire of this conundrum, but it it really, you know, it just it's another example of how it's tough to just put something like that into a black and white category, mm-hmm. and, you know, and that applies to everything else in life. You know, it it it's not always that simple. And you hear me say a lot of the times when we're talking about building science stuff is like, it depends. It's like with a gas leak, you know, it does depend. It it could be life threatening in that situation. Yeah. Call the gas company. But if it's not, then get a plumber. And that's 99% of the time. But yes. for the masses to understand and to try and keep people safe, I think they've pushed that, you know, message out there. And that's been the marketing that they've used. But it is so frustrating when you're on the other end of that and you're getting thrown under the bus for so doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And so, yep. so recently I said, you guys, I, I got to put an end to this. We need to get structure tech and the gas company on the same page. And so I called up the gas company and I got transferred to this person, that person finally talked for a very help, talked to a very helpful person who didn't was say, like, you don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ruben Saltzman. Yeah, right. Of Structure Tech. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, but I, I ended up talking to someone and she was very helpful, but she was aghast that any of their texts would ever say something like that. I mean, she's like, no, there is. Did you say aghast? I said aghast. Yeah, I, I said that on purpose. You caught it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, you Tess. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Felt like it was the right word. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. She, and she, she said, no "I'm gonna have I'm gonna have my supervisor call you." Well, two weeks later, nobody called. I called again, talked to her. This time, she wasn't so nice, and she was kind of annoyed. And she's like, "Well, I told him to call you." Blah blah blah. I said, "Okay, well, thank you. So you think he might? Yep, yep. He'll call." Two weeks. Two weeks later, no call. I called again. Could not get through to her. Somebody else is like, no, she said she's busy, blah, blah, blah. But you could send an email to this person. So I ended up sending an email to this person, gave him the lowdown. You know, I was really nice about it. I'm not being accusatory. I'm just saying, look, you guys and us, we have the same goal here. We're just trying to make houses safe. I'm not trying to make you look stupid. I'm sure your texts aren't trying to make us look stupid. But we, we need to have the same procedure here. So the public yeah. has a little bit more trust in both of us. 
And I'd like to yes. talk about what you guys' procedure is. And if we need to change ours, we'll change it. And if you need yeah. to change yours and what you say to people, maybe you could change it. Let's just, let's just talk. And the guy called me back in like within five minutes of me sending the email. Really? I, I was shocked. Yeah. And it was a long email. And, wow. And we had a very productive conversation. And he he was quite frustrated at some of the stories I was telling him about the text. He's like, that should not be happening. And he wanted specific mm-hmm. addresses. I didn't have a single address to give him. And he said, yeah. well, the next time it does happen, please let me know. And Tessa, <laughs> this was just a couple of weeks ago. The next time this happens... I am going to be so on this. I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm looking forward to it happening. <laughs> I can't wait for the next time uh, a technician from the gas company says there's no gas leak when we've got proof that there is, because I'm surely going to be meeting somebody at the property and I'll, I'll have a follow-up story to share with you about it, but it hasn't to happened be yet. Continued. Yeah, to, to be, be continued. continued. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know what? That is, we're ending the show on a hopeful note, I think. I'm glad you got through to talk to someone. It sounds like that they are, it's on their radar and they're taking action. And hopefully we can kind of shift this issue into being a better understood, better communicated. And um, nobody, nobody loses. Everybody will win. Hopefully people will stay safe. Structure tech will not have a ruined reputation and the gas company will be doing what they need to be doing and not wasting their time. So. Amen, sister. Well put. Mm. That's a, that's a nice bow you put on the episode. That's good. (laughs) Wow. Well, thanks for doing that though, Ruben. I mean, um, I'm sure there's other home inspectors that have run into that issue too, but you know, when they're just a smaller company or a one man run business, it's, that's tough. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If you're a one person shop, and you deal with an issue like this once every one to two years, it's not that big of a deal to make you crazy. But when you got a team of our size and you deal with it every couple of months, it starts to get really annoying. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, thanks for bringing that to our attention. And I'm sure, have you wrote a blog about this too? I have, although I, you know Perfect. what, the one where I'm really complaining about the gas company, I have not <laughs> published it and I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to make anybody look bad. I'm going to wait to publish that until we have resolution. That one's sitting in the hopper. It's all written out. It's fairly angrily, angrily written, and I'm surely going to rewrite it. So it, there's not so much emotion in it, uh, but I was angry when I wrote it. You got to get it out somehow. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, thanks for listening, Tess. Thanks for going down this journey with me. Thanks for sharing, Ruben, from the heart, as always. And uh, I, I sympathize and appreciate your efforts in trying to make a change in this industry. I appreciate it. Well, if uh, if anybody's got any experiences to share, any thoughts on anything related to this, gas leaks, if you're a homeowner, home inspector, whatever, you got your own perspective. I'd love to hear it. Please write into us podcast at structuretech.com. We definitely read all your emails. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'm Ruben Fortessa signing off. Have a good week. Take care.